A warm welcome to everyone joining us for this evening's celebration of the Eucharist. The sanctuary light burns this week for James and Ruby Freeman. The Mass intention for this evening's Mass is for Harold Huff, and tomorrow it is for Dot Steer. The Mass intention for Tuesday, October 17th, is for Mary Gilland. Our opening song is number 315, As We Gather at Your Table. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's begin this Holy Eucharist with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, God's invitation to his heavenly banquet is always open before us. Do we wholeheartedly accept the invitation and do we have the right disposition to participate in, the, in this heavenly banquet with a, in a worthy manner? Let us examine ourselves and prepare ourselves for this Holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you came to call us sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines juicy, rich food, and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold to God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we have looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on the mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever, amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servant to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The peace is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with the guests. But when the king came, but when the king came in to meet the guest, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you come that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but a few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus A woman decided that she was going to have a dinner party for a good number of her friends. So she spent most of the week cleaning, baking, cooking, and preparing the table. And when everyone finally arrived and sat down to eat, she turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, Honey, why don't you say the blessing? Mommy, she said, I don't know what to say. Just simply say what you hear mommy say. So the little girl bowed her head and said, Dear Lord, why on earth did I invite all of these people to dinner? <laughs> like the woman in the story, you and I can occasionally have regrets about the invitation that we offer. But that is not the case with our God. For our God is a God of invitation. A God who is constantly inviting all people into relationship, inviting all to share in His divine life and love. In today's Gospel, we hear about the parable of the wedding feast. Who would be so crazy as to turn down an invitation to a royal wedding? But the people are foolish. 
there is an inclination in us that don't, not only refuses the good but can't even recognize it. We seek to excuse ourselves for a variety of personal reasons. Each Sunday we gather as a community in response to God's invitation to his party. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that the Eucharist is the foretaste of the Messianic banquet. God incarnate waits for us in his house of worship, offering himself for us on our altars and inviting us for the sumptuous banquet of his own body and blood for the nourishment of our souls. That is why just before we receive the Lord in the Holy Communion, we say, happy are those who are called to his supper. The question is what, is what kind of guest are we? There are possibly three kinds of guests. There are the absentee guests who initially accept the invitation but when the time came to honor the invitation, they drew back. Our baptism and confirmation are signs of our acceptance of God's invitation. It is not a one-time commitment or a mere admission, but an ongoing process where renewal and updating is required constantly. Sometimes, what keeps us away from the joy of the kingdom is not so much an outright refusal. A look at our own lives will show that this is true. Example, there is that sick person I know I should visit. But right now, my favorite program is on television. There are those prayers I know I should say but right now, I am too tired. I know I should make an effort to go to Mass on time. But at the last moment, something always get in the way. I know I drink too much. But then, I am under a lot of pressure these days. I know I should spend more time with my children. But I need that over time money. I know that dishonesty is wrong, but I excuse my acts of dishonesty by telling myself that everybody does it. Or what I do is minor compared to what others are getting away with. We can go on and go on. In the book of Revelation, Chapter 3, verse 20, it is said, Listen, I am standing at the door, knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. Opportunity is given, invitation is given. If you refuse to open the door of her heart, if you refuse to come, you alone are responsible for missing the banquet. Remember, it is not just to fulfill, fulfill my obligation that I come to Sunday Mass, but to join the celebration of a very significant act of, act of the Lord in the relation to our salvation. Secondly, there are the guests without the wedding garment. That is, those who attend the feast but do not take the trouble to prepare sufficiently for it as the occasion deserves. By not wearing the mandatory wedding garment, they were physically present at the party but not in mind and spirit. The kingdom of God is freely offered to us but we ought not to take God's grace for granted. We must spare no effort in acquiring 
a moral and spiritual character that is necessary to live as a child of God. Bible tells us exactly what garment of this parable means. Revelation chapter 19 verse 6 to 8 states, And I heard the voice of a great multitude saying, Alleluia, for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and to her it has been clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous, righteous deeds of the saints. St. Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 4 told says, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. The Apostle Peter writes, and all of you must clothe yourself with humility in your dealing with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yes, Christ has instituted the Holy Eucharist. He has instituted the sacramental confession and provides all the help freely for our sanctification and salvation. And if, don't, if you don't make ourselves available, he cannot help. Finally, there are the guests with the wedding garment who make the necessary preparation to present themselves as worthy for the banquet of the king. They had the right attitude, the right preparation and right spirit. They came to, they came truly to celebrate. This parable means that God's, God calls everyone and gives them the power to respond. But to be chosen, we must respond appropriately to the call in our faith and conduct. As the disciples of Christ, are we willing to honor God's invitation? To put our faith into action? Take the necessary risk to live an exemplary life? Of course, God respect our freedom. Instead of forcing us to do His will, He lovingly invites us. This week, God invites each of us to change our plans for the sake of the kingdom. It may be a small task or a big task. Let us be generous. Let us be generous in accepting God's invitation. Let us be renewing and updating our commitment constantly that He, our Shepherd, and that He will lead us to the fullness of life, sharing in His divine life and love. Let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, to God from to God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father. For us men, for us salvation. And by the Holy Spirit, God's and God entered the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified and punished Pilate. He suffered and then was buried. And also again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to shed the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
and confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the trust and faith in the promise of God, let us now place all our prayers and petitions before the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Charles, and all the leaders in the church, that the Lord grant them health and strength for their important mission of reform and renewal in our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gospel reminds that we ourselves have been invited by our loving Father to be among his chosen. We pray for the wisdom to joyfully accept that invitation and join with the Lord at his eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who reject the word of God, that the goodness and wonder of our loving Father be revealed to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. October 16th is the World Food Day. We thank God for the gifts of food and drink, which he has generously created for us, and pray that we may willingly share with those who hunger and lack adequate nutrition in our communities and across the globe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We look with sorrow at the renewed violence in the Holy Land and pray for peace, love, and tolerance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritual well-being of all parishioners, for all the couples, for all who have died in Christ recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Harold Huff, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the nourishment, for nourishing us at the table of your word. Now we look forward to be fed by you at the table of the Eucharist. Help us to long for this spiritual nourishment so that we may, we may one day be worthy of enjoying the eternal banquet with you in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If we have any children to bring up their collections now. We will be singing number 124, Somebody's Knocking at Your Door. Somebody's 
knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Jesus calls you somebody. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of charities for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the praise of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through this act of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And with all the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created that rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts, be our body for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, 
he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile as yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Maurice and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation be pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the praise of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as they pass him from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us, and lead us from temptation, but leave us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will we live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other a sign of peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We will be singing number 311, Table of Plenty. Stop. 
gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. My bread will ever sustain you through days of sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Your fields will flower in fullness. Your homes will flourish in peace. For I, the giver of hope and harvest, will wring my rain on the soil. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Our 175th anniversary celebration is on Sunday, December 3rd, and we would love for you to attend. Please RSVP by November 1st by calling or texting Mary Boltman or Tara Johanneman. The information is also in your bulletin. The Finance Committee will meet on Tuesday, October 24th at 6.45 p.m. Next week is World Mission Sunday. There is an envelope in your collection envelope box to give to this annual collection that funds missionary activities around the world. Established by Pope, Pope Pius XI in 1926, this global celebration is an opportunity for every church community to express solidarity with our brothers and sisters living in mission territories. Pope Francis has declared the theme for this year is Hearts on Fire, Feet on the Move. Also, we are looking for a binder that was in the parish library. It had pictures in it of the parish center building project from demolition to completion. We would like to use some of these pictures in it that are of for our 175th anniversary history book. If you are looking at it, we would like to borrow it from you this week. Please contact Tara or Mary Boltman if you can help us locate this binder. Thank you. Let us pray.
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 390, City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build the city of God. sons of the morning, we are daughters of day, <coughs> who has loved us, has brightened our way. The Lord of all kindness has called us to be a light for his people to set their hearts free. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing, for the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day.